Hi, I'm Dave Gamble, Farmers Insurance District Manager in the South Bay of Los Angeles. I'm super excited to be talking to you today as I will be interviewing Farmers Insurance Personal Lines Agency of the Year for 2019, Dan Kitajima. This is an incredible recognition and one well-deserved by Dan and his entire team. Let me share a few points about Dan's agency. Dan's been in business for about 13 years with Farmers Insurance and now has staff of 11. Dan has 9,000 PIF in force with a policy or household density of 1.93. This is an incredible number for such a large insurance agency. Dan is gonna be sharing with us how to become a lead factory and how to win with internet leads. Let me share with you a couple of the critical points that Dan has shared with me in our conversation. The first thing is, Dan let me know to be successful with internet leads, you've got to have a high level of automation. And he's gonna explain a little bit about what that means. The next piece was, you need to set the stage for the customer to wanna to call you. And he shared with me that the use of social media and branding your agency is incredibly important to do that so that you're not just a telephone number, you're not just an email in somebody's inbox, you've given the prospect an opportunity to find out a bit about who you are. The next piece was, you have to work enough leads to get the conversion ratios that you want to see. Very important. And then lastly, Dan shared with me that if the agent can't work the internet leads and really be successful with it, they're probably not going to be able to train the staff to do it. Dan will share with us about an average of a two-year process for bringing new people into his business and how they start working internet leads. So I'm really excited to share this interview with you. And with that, Let's talk to Dan. So Dan, welcome. Hey Dave, thanks for having me. Awesome, I'm so glad to see you again. And uh, so Dan, can you start out with just helping us a little bit about your background and how you got into this business with Farmers Insurance? Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, Dave, thanks again for having me. Um, I think it's uh, awesome. I could tell from your uh, enthusiasm of scheduling this that you really want to help out the agents, not only for your district, for the whole state too. So I could uh, feel your passion and um, your effort for trying to help out other agents is something I could you know, really relate to. So appreciate you setting this up. So yeah, my background story is I graduated college and then I wanted a sales job. So I just happened to end up at AAA right out of college. I worked there for three years and it was a call center environment, you know, so they got me licensed and they trained me. And it was a very call center environment where calls were coming in and they taught us how to close deals over the phone. And that's really what I did. And it was a good fast paced environment. And I did pretty well for the first three years. And after three years, you know, my parents are entrepreneurs and I wanted to do my own thing. I felt like I gained the knowledge and I felt like I was ready. So I looked around for opportunities and farmer's insurance sounded like the best one for me. I started my insurance agency, August of 2007. The very first day I went into the office, uh, Darla's office, who I really want to give a lot of credit to, to my success. Rest in peace to Darla. She was such an influence to my uh, start to my career. But yeah, first day I went into her uh, office. It was pretty packed, so uh, I took the conference room. I borrowed it. I was kind of in and out of that room as uh, they had meetings. Yeah, I, I, got, I wanted to get to selling right away. So I sold my own policy. That was an easy one. And then I sold my parents' policy, three cars and a home and a rental property. And then I went home that day and I felt really good about myself. I was like, well, that's a great day, you know? And then the second day I came into the office, there was nothing much going on. So I'm kind of an action fiend and I'm still am. I like to stay busy and I just want things to be happening in the office. I want to be talking to people. I want to be with other producers or working, you know, competing with other agents. I just was so used to that fast paced environment that it felt very slow to me. So uh, 2007, there wasn't any iPhones or there wasn't any, um, you know, there was, it was a different world back then, but there was Google. So I went on uh, Google and I typed in how to get insurance leads. And all these companies came out and, you know, I was just desperate for action. And the funny story that uh, back then, Dave, is that while I was transitioning from AAA to farmers, there was a little bit of poker boom going on at that time, uh, 2007. So... I was playing some high stakes poker, going to casinos and things like that. You know, I, I love poker, but I don't play anymore, but um, I, I wasn't really good at it. But it taught me that, you know, you had to send the money, you know, you had to risk the money. And, you know, I was kind of used to losing money. So I went on there and I said, hey, what's a couple thousand dollars? 
you know, let's put it into these companies and see what happens. From that day on, I started buying leads and at least it got me busy. You know, I was talking to people, I was getting rejected, but I was, I felt like, you know, I was doing something and that's really um, where it all started. You know, I'm so glad you brought up Darla. She was a great district manager. And, you know, I don't think everybody really understands the role of a district manager. Uh, I've known Darla, you know, for a long time before she passed away. And I agree. Rest in peace, Darla. Could you share with me a couple of the, the things we discussed earlier about the ways Darla supported you? I think it's so critical in the start of a new agent's career on how to get off on the right foot. Yeah, sure. I think the role she really played was just someone there to keep the morale positive. You know, we as agency owners, we, we just, every day is not an easy day. There's just going to be challenges. There's going to be, you know, especially if you're in sales, you're just getting a lot of rejection, especially if you're working with internet leads. She just had a great way of just having, using humor as a way to just lift up our spirits. Even when things didn't seem well, you know, I'm learning a new system. It was just, you know, as every agency owner, the first few days, first few months, first few years, really, is not easy. And during that time, she just had a smile. She was happy to be at work. She was happy to just have somebody to talk to, brainstorm with, and just the positivity, you know, because I think internet leads back then, you know, it, it was, it, it wasn't something that was looked at as like, hey, it was it wasn't really something that was like recommended, or it, it actually, I think a lot of people saw it as a fad. She wasn't cynical at all. She was like, hey, yeah, go for it. You know, it probably will work. I don't know sure if she believed that or not, but the positivity and using humor to get over the uh, difficult days was great. And I feel like that instilled in me early on. And I, I could get a little tough on myself sometimes. And sometimes when I do get a little tough, I still have a picture of her on my desk. I, I kind of look at her smile and say, hey, you keep it positive, keep, keep smiling, find the humor in little things. Sometimes find the humor in the struggle uh, has really helped me out during those early days. I think that's great, Dan. Thanks for sharing that because especially as a new agent, the DM does play a critical role in, in helping to keep the positive energy flowing. And now you have my friend Jim MacGyver, a tremendous district manager. Tell us a little bit about how that interaction works today with Jim. Yeah, with Jim, the situation is a little bit more different now, a little bit more low maintenance. You know, I kind of do have my own office, obviously, and I'm working in, in my staff and I stay busy. I think the great thing about Jim is, you know, I could, I could get the sense with you too, Dave, that you guys are, you know, legends and farmers and been in the business for such a long time. But just the humility to be able to say that, hey, Dan, you know, I work for you. You know, and I think that really was, that was the first meeting I had with him. It just set the tone. I was like, okay, I feel so comfortable. You know, because I, I worked in corporate America at AAA, and part of the reason that it didn't really work out, besides, you know, not it wasn't that my business, obviously, is that the management was the ones that were higher and the agents were looked at as nothing. You know, they were like, you got to, you have to do that. And I think with the farmer's culture, which I loved and I really appreciate is that the DMs are, same thing with Darla, they don't treat me as an employee of theirs. They respect me as a business owner. And I f they, the attitude is more like, what can I do to help you? If you need anything, let me know. And I think that is just all I could really ask for is to have somebody that if I have a situation uh, I could talk to and they're not really like, you have to do this for me. Here's your quota. It's more of helping each other out. They need life policies. They'll let me know if I need something, if I have questions, if I have ideas to bounce off of, he's there. And just that, that relationship of both being business owners and understanding each other is something that I really appreciate. I think you said it perfectly. I consider our agents business partners. And if it was anything else, I don't think I'd be excited about it. And I don't think the agents would be excited about. It. Now, Dan, if I heard you right, I think you just said, I have a lot of gray hair. Would you say, you know, you're one of the legends of farming? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've been around for a while. That's absolutely right. And I think my hair uh, shows it. You know, I've met a lot of uh, really great agents in my time. I've been fortunate enough to uh, make five president's councils during my time as a DM thus far. I've been to a lot of championships and a lot of toppers clubs. And I've met a lot of the, the great agents in this company, and I've recognized this. Many of them have this very high intensity level. What are some of the attributes that you feel make you really successful in this business? Well, thanks for saying that, Dave. One of the things I would say that I consider myself is I'm a pretty consistent person. You know, I like to really wonder what's going to be next 
at my agency. And I like to stay humble too. And I think that's something that I've seen from other farmers agents uh, that I came across that are great is that, you know, I, I just don't feel like I've really accomplished anything. This business has such great potential. And I know from past experience to be able to get to the next step is just to be consistent and not really ever get too full of myself because I just understand the big scheme of things. There's just so much more that could be accomplished. Dan, I think those are a sage advice and uh, some of those key elements of being humble. I think to be a good business leader, we can't, you know, get out of our skis and think we're the greatest thing on the earth because there's always somebody better. And I like your attitude about, you know, the curiosity in getting to the next level and, and the desire to work hard. So with that, thank you very much again, Dan, and have a great rest of your day and have a great 2020 in the midst of this pandemic. I'm sure you're making the most out of it. Until next time.